Okay, hello, hello, my name is Max Wolf. I'm a TA for CS61A in spring 2015. Today I'm going to be covering discussion four, which covered list comprehensions and trees. This video will focus on trees. Okay. Just a quick review. In this class, we're going to define a tree to be a uh, sort of an abstract data type here that has a, a value at its root and then a list of branches, which are also trees. So this is our constructor, it's a tree, it takes as an argument a value, and then a list, it, this is an optional argument, takes the list that, uh, that contains a list of trees, which are going to be called branches in this case. And so we have two selectors, we can uh, get the value of the tree, which is the value at the root of the tree with root tree, and the list of our subtrees, which is uh, branches, which takes as an argument a tree. And then there are also two convenience functions, is leaf and is tree which is going to check that we have a valid tree here. We're going to check that we have a valid tree and that we also have a leaf. So a leaf is something, just a reminder, a leaf is a tree with no branches. Okay, so say I want to create the tree, the tree that looks like this. I want something that has a, a value of three at its root. Then I want it to have two branches. One of those branches is uh, has a value of one. It has three children that have values of 0, 4, and 5. And then I want 3 to have one more branch that has a value of 7. OK, so let's look at how we would create this, just knowing that this is the graphical image of what we want. So let's call this, we'll call this tree 1. All right, so tree 1 is going to equal tree. It's going to have a value of 3 at its root. This is value. Now we have a list of branches because all trees that are not leaves have branches. Its first branch is going to be of a, a tree with the value of one at its root and then three children. So we make another list of branches with no, so all of these children are leaves. So we can quickly go through them. Tree four, whoop, tree five. We're done with one's branches. So we can finish that constructor. Now three has one more child, or one more branch that's going to be a subtree that only has a value of seven at its root. Okay, so this this constructor right here is the constructor for this graphical uh, tree right here. I tend to think of trees, I think it's easier for me to think of trees in sort of this nodal representation. Um, and you can remember here that trees are, are an abstract data type, so we don't actually need to worry about whether or not this tree constructor is implemented with a list or with a uh, set of pairs or with some other other thing that we don't know about yet. All we need to worry about is that we have two ways to get, get the values out of it, uh, a root, and then we can also get a list of subtrees. And we need a one really nice property of trees is that all of the branches of a tree are also trees. So any operation that we define over a tree will work for all of its branches. And that's going to be really important in this next problem. All right. So let's take a look at this. This is a this problem is asking us to return the size of a tree and it takes in some tree t. So if I was to put in, you know, a tree that looks like this that has these values, I would return out 4 because there are four nodes in my tree. Anyway, all right, so if you haven't looked at this problem yet, take a moment to try it yourself and then we'll uh, we'll go over it together. If I want to solve, so trees are going to work really well with recursion. And so the first thing that we always think about when we do recursion is what's my base case. And so the simplest thing that we can pass into um, tree size that is going to be a valid tree is a leaf, right? So let's think about what if I passed in just a single node that had the value of 3 or some value, right? What would I return? So if is leaf t. I can see that this is just a tree of size 1. So I'm going to return 1 here. Now if I know if I get a slightly more complicated tree something like this how can I so now I need to think about how I can break up my recursion into um, sort of solving how I can break up the solution to this bigger problem this big problem right here into the solutions of smaller problems. Well so I can see right away that 
this tree, just like my, my leaf, has to have at least one, has to have at least one node in it, so it's got size of at least one. And now it also, if, it also has a set of branches, right? And so what we want are the sizes of each of our branches added together, right? Plus the one node that we have for the root. So if I was able to get the size of this tree and the size of this tree, then it'd be really easy for me to get the size of my total tree. So I could, you know, this is the size of two and this is the size of one, and I know that I have one value at the root. And so if I add all these together, then I have a, um, a value of size four, right? So a tree of size four. All right, so we know we're gonna return at least one, a size of at least one for the root. And then really we wanna add up all of our tree branches, right? So let's think of how we can do that. So one thing that we could do is first we can get a list of all of the sizes of each of my branches, right? So let's do tree size branch for branch in branches. Right, so this is going to for each of my branches, I'm going to get now a list of the size of each of those branches for every one of the branches that I have. Okay. So in the case of this, we're going to get pass in this branch. We're going to get out two. We're just going to trust our recursion here. This really requires trusting recursion. We're going to pass in this branch. We're going to get a size of one. And now we need a way to sum them all up. Luckily, there's a built-in function sum. And now this is going to be our solution. So what we're doing is we're remembering that we must have at least a size of one for our root, and then we're going to want to just trust our recursion to return the correct size of each of our branches for every branch that we pass in. So we have a list of branches, which are also trees, so we're, we're okay passing in branch into this tree size, because it's gonna return some integer, because it's expecting a tree and it's getting a tree as an argument. And this is gonna work if we look at this recursion right here, we'll just use this specific example. So we can go through this function and just check each thing. So when we get passed in this whole tree, we see that this is not a leaf. So we're going to return one, which is the value of the root, plus the sum of the size of our tree for each of our branches in T. So we have two branches. We're gonna call tree size on each of our branches. We'll call tree size on this first branch. We're not a leaf, so we're gonna return one Plus, we only have one branch, so we'll call tree size on this branch. This branch is a leaf, so we'll return one. We'll add them together. This is going to now this tree is going to return two as its size, which is a correct size for this subtree. Now we're going to check out our other branch of three, which is four. That's a leaf, so we can return one. And now one plus two plus one is equal to four, which is the size of our tree. Okay. If you have any questions about this, feel free to post in the comments and uh, I'll sort of get them cleared up.